hello wonderful people welcome back to a chapter a day um thank you so much for joining me once again uh yesterday we saw the descendants of esau and today we are going to look at genesis chapter 37 which is going to tell us about joseph's dreams hallelujah we are getting into really really interesting parts of genesis and i'd like you all to stick around and invite your friends and loved ones to join us Thank you so much for being here on this platform. God bless you. So let's read Genesis chapter 37. Grab your Bibles, your very favorite version. Today I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. <clears throat> so if you're ready, let's read. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flock. He worked for his half brothers the sons of his father's wives Bilhah and Zilpah but Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing just Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children the <clears throat> okay let's read three again verse three Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, jo Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't... Okay? They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told... <coughs> When he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the fields tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundles stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king? Do you? Do you actually think that you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and they and the way he talked about them. Soon, yes. Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time, he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Okay, let's continue to read. Soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready and I will send you to them. I am ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers and the flock are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a, re a report. So Jacob sent him on his way and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the area noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? He asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are? Where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. <coughs> They have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. Joseph sold into slavery. Little did he know that that was the last time that he was leaving his home, that he was never, ever going to go back home again. How awful. How, how awful. Okay, let's continue reading. When... That's verse 18 now. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in a distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We, we can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we will see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their schemes, he 
came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? <clears throat> Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. He was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty and there was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming towards them. It was a group of Ishmaelites, traders, taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin. Okay, and I'll see where it's going. Okay. Um... Taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? We would have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to these Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph. His brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Some time later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented, The boy is gone. What will I do now? Then the brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in its blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son. He would say then, he would say, and then he would weep. Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was the captain of the palace guard. Isn't this interesting? I love it. I love it. I love it. I just love it so much. So that is what we see in Genesis chapter 37. We see Joseph's dreams. You know, Joseph was the first child of Rachel, the beloved or the most loved wife of Jacob. And the very one that also delivered Benjamin and who died along the way when they were returning from Shechem and they were going back to Bethel. So um, here we see how Joseph was loved so much by his father Jacob and the father so much favored him. I can understand it because sometimes your love will just go out to one of your kids. You don't know why, but your love will just go out to them. Okay, <clears throat> so I think his love went out so much to Joseph and the Bible records that because Joseph was born in his old age. So he loved him so much. He even made him such a beautiful coat of many colors. And, you know, he was so favored among his brothers. So the brothers hated him because their father loved him more. So Joseph also would come and report the bad things that they were doing, you know, to their father. And so they didn't like that, right? And they thought that it was a tattle tale and he was telling on them to their father. So he, it was not long before Joseph started having these dreams. God was trying to reveal to him the things that he had in store for him for the future. And Joseph told his brothers happily, thinking that they would be happy with him about the dreams he had. But the brothers, the brothers were even more furious with him because of his dreams. So they were like, so you think that we will bow down before you and worship you? Even when he told his father the second dream he had, his father too was like, what is the meaning of this? Don't be saying these kind of dreams or these kind of things. His father scolded him. 
but it was the revelation of the future that God had for him. It was a foundation that was going to lead him into his destiny, the things that he was seeing. Hallelujah. So we are going to see a lot about the life of Joseph as we continue reading. I'd like you to keep up with us in Genesis, um, in the book of Genesis. There are lots of interesting things. Um, so as we see, the brothers became so jealous that they had, you know, nursed the thought of killing him. So I want to tell you about jealousy. Jealousy is very destructive. The time that you start feeling like you're jealous of somebody, I want you to take a fast and pray that God would nullify that spirit, that jealousy within you. That the Lord will uproot that demon that is trying to settle in your spirit. And that you give you grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. And pray that love, the love of God, that the way Jesus sees his children, the way Jesus sees that person will be the same way that you will be seeing the person. And that jealousy will dissipate from your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is a very destructive thing. If it starts coming into you and you allow it to settle in you, I'm telling you, it will be destructive. It will destroy you and it will destroy the people around you. That is exactly what happened to the brothers of Joseph. I mean, they planned to kill him. And finally, they thought and sold him as a slave. Who would do such a thing? Who would do it? So their hearts were gone right to that direction. Reuben, who was the very first son of Jacob, was not for that. So he was like, no, he's not going to do that. He was planning that. When they throw him in that dry system, he will come back later on and then, um, you know, save him and send him home to his father. So, but that was not the plan of God. That was not the plan of God. So there's also something I want to let you know. Sometimes the bad things that happen to you, they don't happen to you because God hates you. Or because God doesn't know about you. God knew about Joseph. He had a mighty plan for the life of Joseph. He was going to be the savior of his time. Hallelujah. Because of the future that God had programmed for the people. He had, he had bestowed upon this little boy. Who was just 17 years old at that time. The responsibility of saving the world from hunger and famine. Praise the Lord. He was the one that was, you know, given that task. Hallelujah. And that included his own family. Because if God had not, you know, raised him and, and been with him throughout that period, he would not have fulfilled that destiny. And something bad, terrible would have happened to everybody in the world. Okay. But as we read and move ahead, we are going to see how the life of Joseph unfolded. And we are going to see all the things that he had to go through on his road to his destiny. Praise the Lord. So for now, we just saw how his brothers are trying to kill him. But little did they know that they are pushing him closer and closer to his divine destiny. Hallelujah. So sometimes when people persecute you, when people hate you, when people do all kind of bad things against you, when people come against you, they stand against you, they revile against you, they hate you for no good reason. You will think that, oh God, why is this happening to me? I want to tell you that you should find courage and be strong. Do not hate them back because they are doing all these things to you. Remember the words of Jesus when he said that you should you should love those who hate you and pray for those who persecute you. Hallelujah. And those who use you, you know, you should pray for them. Hallelujah. So that is what we have to do. We should find grace and courage to do that. Hallelujah. Just know one thing, that the more they do it, the more they push you into your divine destiny. But your own part that you need to play is to remain on the side of God. Remain in that good character. Remain in the good, you know, good behavior. Do not fight back. Do not try to fight for yourself. Hallelujah. If you have said that God should fight for you, then you have to put your hands away. Amen. And let him fight for you. You have to get out of the way. Stand on his side. 
praise the Lord. Get behind God and let him stand in front of you and fight for you. And the more you do that, the more you will go and go. He will push you forward and forward to that destiny. And I want to tell you that this is not only the first uh, this is not the only thing that Joseph had to face on the way to destiny. There were more, more difficulties, more difficult challenges that were before him. But I will, as we read ahead, we are going to see what he did to be able to overcome those difficulties. So for now, we see how little things, even our family members, can turn against us. But even when they turn against you, child of God, rejoice. Go back to the place of God and seek the face of God. Seek this face, how to be in good character, how to respond in that situation, how to respond in love and not to respond in hate, how to respond in, you know, in the in the way that the Lord wants you to respond. Because I tell you, our human nature will want us to react badly, we want us to hate them with everything that is within us. But is that what God will expect from us? So... It is a call for us to be in good character. The world is also against us as children of God. The world is rising against us. All kinds of things are happening. All kinds of laws are being passed. But what are we going to do? We are not going to hate them. We are going to love them with the same love that Jesus loved us while we were still there in the world. Hallelujah. And we are going to keep praying and trusting God that he will reveal himself to people. And when we have the chance, we will share his love to them. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for being here with me today. So Joseph was going on going on to Egypt and in chapter 38, we are going to see another story. My caption says Judah and Tamar. We are going to see that story. Hallelujah. We are seeing this story because it has a lot to play in the life of Jesus, the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are going to see that because when we, we read in one of the chapters, we saw how Jude, um, um, Reuben, who was the first son of Jacob, defiled his father's bed by sleeping with the same woman that his father had been sleeping and having children with that was something that was abominable that was bad and then jacob heard about it praise the lord so we are going to see what happened around that time what what consequences did he incur by that action and then we are also going to continue to see other things that the bible will be teaching us as we read forward so thank you so much god bless you for being part of the chapter today today Thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking around with us. And share this with your family and your friends. And keep up with us. God bless you. I love you. See you in Genesis chapter 38. Shalom, shalom.